Here comes another question that comes up from Tonk the Stonk. What a name. Interesting name. And it's a question that I think is on many people's mind concerning those of us who are polemicists, Christian polemicists, who are confronting Islam. Why is it that we come from different positions? And do we even agree with each other? So this is what he says. Hi, Jay. Why haven't David Wood, Sam Shamoon, and Dr. Michael Brown accepted yours and Tom's Holland work on the Quran? Also, they do not accept Dan Gibson's work on the direction of the Qiblas facing Petra. David and Sam mentioned you in one of their streams a few days ago after being asked the question in the stream. Have you talked with David Wood or Sam Shaboon or Dr. Michael Brown about Islam? I'd like to see you talk to these brothers about your findings. Please reach out to them. I'm sure there are many Muslims or Christian viewers who would benefit from your research. Now, to be fair... Uh, Tom Holland doesn't ever t refer to the Quran. He doesn't go. He does, but he doesn't ever investigate the Quran. That's not his area of expertise. Tom, Dr. Tom Holland was more interested in the emergence, the area that I'm interested in. Uh, it's Dan Brubaker that is really the one that is the expert on the Quran. I'm not sure uh, uh, Tonk the Stonk heard David or Sam correctly on that. Also, this idea that they disagree on the direction of the Qibla towards Petra. I don't know if David has said that or if Sam has said that. If they have said it publicly, I'd like to know how that they can come to that conclusion. Because to, if you're not going to accept what Gibson has found, then you're going to have to come up with a other uh, support. Not even Dr. David King, who is the world authority on the Qibla, disagrees with Gibson on that. He is very clear that all the earliest Qiblas in the first century of Islam do not face Mecca. They all face Petra. Now, how, why they face Petra and not Mecca. That's where David King disagrees. And maybe that's what you picked up on David Wood and Sam Shamoon. But I'd, lo I'd love to know why, why Wood and uh, Shamoon would take that position. I don't think they do. But here, the bigger question, and this is something I, I see that the Tonk the Stonk is getting at. Can we, as Christian polemicists, can we disagree in our viewpoints? Can we disagree in the areas that we're working? Is there room for that? And that's the bigger question. And I, I would say, absolutely. Listen, I have worked with David Wood uh, for a number of years. I was just, I've traveled with him. Uh, I have been to Africa with him. I've also, just uh, last September, we were sharing the same platform in California. Sam Shamoon, I've known for about 20 years, maybe even more than that. And I have, was just with him last December. Uh, doing so, we were uh, he was coming to do some recordings, and I had just, just on my way out from doing some recordings with Al Fadi. So I know both of them, and we do get along. Uh, we do not always a agree on everything, and there's room for that. We don't need to agree on everything. But here is the difficulty that many of you are coming up with concerning the areas that we work in. David Wood and Sam Shamoon, I guess also uh, Michael Brown. I don't know him as well. I never met him personally, but they are interested in what the traditions say about Muhammad and what the traditions say about how Muhammad treated women and all the rest. And so they're working within the traditions. Sam Shamoon is much more interested in, how, in responding to many of the criticisms against the Bible, and he is much more of a theologically adept in fact, one of the best and probably the best I've ever come across. I've never seen somebody who can really tackle Muslims on their misconceptions of the Bible and also their misconceptions of the, even their own scriptures. That is their area of expertise. I don't expect them to want to move into the area of the historical critique. That is my area of expertise. That's the one that I've really been dwelling in for the last, well, and we're talking about 25 years since 1995. A lot of my debates are in this area. And so because of that, we are, we're, we're really caught, talking in two different genres. Now, let me explain this. And this is something that, I, that I, I, it's important for you to understand. When David Wood and Sam Shamoon are confronting the Islamic traditions, they're assuming that the Islamic traditions are, are authoritative for the Muslims they're engaging with. They're not themselves saying that they believe in those traditions per se. They don't need to. They're doing a whole different study. That study is to unpack the traditions, to read them as they are, and to come up with conclusions concerning whether or not those stories about that man in that place from the 9th and 10th century are relevant for today. My area of expertise is to look and even see whether any of those traditions are correct. And what I'm finding and what we're finding, and Hatun Tash is doing this with me, so is Al-Fadi. We're, we're interested in the 7th century. We're interested in how it really began. We're interested in going back to the very beginning 
and asking whether or not, actually it should be this direction, going to the very beginning, and asking whether the 7th century, the, the, all this, the, the stories from the traditions that talk about this man in that place, doing these things to these people and saying these enormous amount of sayings, we're interested in whether or not they are correct. And what we're finding is these 9th and 10th century traditions are absolutely incorrect. So here we are doing the historical critique. There is the, the Woods and the Shumuns doing the relevancy critique over on this side. And we seem to be talking in two different planes and we seem to be disagreeing, which is on face value is very understandable, but we're not disagreeing. These are two different categories, two different critiques. When you engage with the traditions, you have to engage with that which the Muslims already accept, and therefore you've got to engage with them on that level, and you've got to say, if this is what you accept, if this is the man who lived in this place, who's doing these things and saying these things, is that is 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 what you look to as your paradigm and as your model, is that relevant for today? And just look how heinous this man is. That is perfectly legitimate for them to ask that question. They're not asking a historical critique in that point. They're not asking whether or not it's true or not. It is true for the Muslims they're engaging with, and that's important. That is true for them. My interest over here, on the other hand, is to ask, is this guy over here even correct? Does he, did he ever live in Mecca? Was he ever a Muslim? Was there even any religion called Islam? And I'm asking that question because for me, that's where my interests lie. It's not, I'm not disputing what Shamoon and what are saying. I'm just saying that what we're going to find is going to destroy everything that they've been working with. And I, so we're, in some ways, we're confronting the foundations of Islam simultaneously from two different directions, using two different categories you be using diff two different uh, areas of critique. Both are valid, which means it sounds like sometimes we're disagreeing with each other. We're not really disagreeing. We have two different audiences. And for because we have two different audiences, the, the conclusions that we come to are going to confront both audiences, and they're also going to confront every Muslim. And I would suggest that they will also confront anybody who is supporting this man named Muhammad living in the 7th century. Whether or not you're using the 9th and 10th century to, traditions to support that man Muhammad, or whether you're using the 7th century, what we're finding of the non-existence of that man, you're both going to come to the same conclusion, and that is this man Muhammad in this religion called Islam and this book called the Quran and the, all that it surrounds it, that almost 2 billion people are following, is absolutely corrupt. Doesn't is not a religion that that not only supports the historical critique, it doesn't even support the relevancy critique over on this side. And we're getting in, in two different directions simultaneously. Fascinating, because the same things have been done with Christianity. We have had many Muslims who have attacked the Bible over here and said that everything we see in the Bible, that this man uh, named Jesus, that he is not the man for the day, he has all these different problems, and, and certainly there's an awful lot within Christianity that's just not relevant for today. Then over here they say, or that really, when they're saying Jesus, they're really saying the church, they're looking at Christians, and there's a legitimate criticism that the church is not doing what Jesus said they're to do. But on this side, there's an awful, another whole critique, and that is, is the Bible even correct? Is Jesus? Was he a historical figure? Did he even exist? Did he live in Jerusalem? Did he, was he born in Bethlehem? Did he die on the cross? Did he rise again? Those are perfectly good historical questions to ask and to confront. And so simultaneously, we have been able to support both. And that's why I love Jesus Christ, because for the last 200 years, we've been asking that, answering this question and come to almost every, we've been pretty much, pretty much been able to eradicate every one of those confrontations. On this side, however, there's still a theological problem with Jesus. The idea that he's God, that idea that God can enter time and space. These are brilliant questions that we allow everybody to ask. There's no problem that they do ask it. And we've been able to now, we're coming and sh showing that we have responses to every one of those. And that's where Sam Shamoon is really good in this area. He's brilliant. Meanwhile, we're looking at the relevancy issue and looking how Christianity is, and David Wood is brilliant on showing how great and exciting is Christianity is for the 21st century. Both are needed for both categories for both religions. Not contradictory, complementary. So let's see if we can, if that answers your question, I don't know, talk the stock, but I don't think that we're contradicting each other. I think we're just complementing each other in our two different areas of our venues of question. Okay, this is Jay then, here in Pennsylvania. Over now.